don't have a goddamn night. Be honest, throughout that entire skit, you have zero clue of the companies that I mentioned. Maybe other than the picture of Zaha Hadid. What were all those ambiguously named companies like Heinz or related companies? I mean, one sounds like a ketchup brand and the other sounds like a video game developer. These are all architectural real estate firms, and not just your run-of-the-mill firms. These people have built America's tallest buildings with their invisible hands. They are the reason why New York City is so expensive to exist in, and why every foreigner thinks LA, Miami, and New York City are the only cities in the United States. Many of their top-tier architecture firms have cemented their place as the skyscraper makers, even internationally, hence the reason why every major city looks the same. Except for London. I don't know what they're thinking. Maybe a skyline in resemblance of their teeth? Now, of course, you're asking yourself, what is a skyscraper? Well, ask me. I've got Wikipedia right here in front of me. Skyscrapers must be self-supporting. So no radio towers. Over 150 meters or 164.042 American meters tall. So no boys under six feet. And be at least 50% habitable, aka have at least half a brain. If 50% is a significant amount of space that doesn't need filled, imagine only having to fill 50% of a girl's schedule when you're dating her. I mean, I can't relate, I'm single. Places like the One World Trade Center struggle to fill their office space, and Shanghai Tower has its top half off during the night, which is what I'm going to do if this damned political science degree doesn't work out. It's, it's quite astonishing that many of the skyscrapers you see in those big cities, a lot of the floors just have lights on. There's no one using them. It's just empty space. This is wasteful and environmentally unfriendly. These skyscrapers have not always looked the same, but they've always reflected the style of the time period. Buildings like the Flatiron predate the 1960s, then there was a stark change in architecture to that of the Chase Plaza. Today we have... Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Today most skyscrapers are made out of concrete and glass, or composite, which is concrete and glass. But why do these architectural firms get hard-ons for buildings that look like this? Other than the wood skyscrapers made by the Vikings in those Scandinavian weirdo countries with a whole lot of... <laughs> today's buildings don't have great differences in architectural style. One reason, of course, is that large construction projects for expensive skyscrapers need quote-unquote reliable architectural firms for financial investors. Those architectural firms will run few. The other is that concrete and glass are very efficient in terms of constructing. Both materials are extremely cheap to produce compared to wood, which is now more common on Samsung users, or brick, which requires masonry and skilled labor. Concrete is not only strong and durable, it's a good insulator. But for concrete to get hard, you have to find quality gammatophilia fetish videos, and in the process, it releases a significant amount of carbon dioxide. Concrete accounts for 8% of the world's total CO2 emissions, according to Chatham House. Glass, on the other hand, is a quite necessary material in building something for living things. If you don't believe sunlight is good for you, then you probably have sunk a few thousand hours into a video game or TLC binging. Now, I'm not going to make jokes about how bad Glass was. We knew it should have just been one movie. We didn't need to. And we aren't going to talk about how Bruce Willis kind of fell off after B.B. King, The Life of Riley with actor Bill Cosby. And we aren't going to talk about how he's just the American version of Jason Statham, who just made banger after banger of Fast and Furious movies every other year, baby. What were we talking about? Oh yes, glass. You see, split made sense other than some of the energy. Glass is not energy efficient because the one thing it is designed for brings in heat, and it is a reflective surface. Here's that same skyline I talked about earlier start after Boris Johnson's hair. Oi, bruv. Cheeky bloke just prepped a fraud egg upon your ledge. Blimey, mate. Catch a tad sun I bequeath by this dwelling. Was that accurate? So not only is glass inefficient for the people inside it, it can be dangerous for the people out. All of these new skyscrapers tout their energy efficiencies, but don't account for how taxing on the environment it is to build these large structures, and then how expensive it is to maintain cool temperatures for all the snobby people. These buildings' facades are covered in windows and account for 14% of the world's energy consumption just to keep it cool. This is where Trump came around with his windowless buildings. He said, quote, So they want to take a building. They want to make the windows, from nice windows to little windows. Oh, that's just fine. That was my business. I know all about construction. That's wonderful. Let's take your windows out and make them tiny little windows because you are going to save two cents on energy. These people are, this is the most important election in the history of our country. This is an exaggeration, but it's kind of true that we need to tone down on the rectangular glass buildings, or the twisty buildings, and the curvy glass buildings. This is my next grievance. Skyscrapers look visually unappealing. Looking at the Burj Khalifa or Republic Plaza as cool and all the first time, after looking at all the other buildings that look exactly like it, you don't get phased by it. Architectural cohesivity is important and you end up with a skyline more diverse than the dialects of English emanating from these people's mouths. But taken to the point of some stupid teenage dystopian novel, eh, let's step off the gas. Here's the Hudson Yards. Which one is more architecturally stimulating to you? The Avengers Tower? Its little brother? The Smokestacks ones? I mean, with the exemption of the Empire State Building, every other building here looks the same. The same with Dubai, Shanghai, they all have monotonous architecture with no complexity. Unlike the homes of unregistered child pedophiles in Europe, or of its achievements of its rulers. This idea of lackluster architecture continues at the ground floor of the buildings. The entrances of the buildings are devoid of anything. It's just nothing but a glass door. 
a valet boy making minimum wage, or a poor person pissing their kidney stones out, or a Starbucks sign seem to be the only thing fitting outside of these buildings. The entrances are not fancy like the deco entrance to the Chrysler building, they're sleek, like Matthew McConaughey's gonna make a commercial on these front doors. Because skyscrapers are not inviting on the outside, they force you to go inside, where you can spend money, exactly part of their plan. The entrance into 30 huts and yards feels like I'm walking in on a sexual assault at Vaught Tower, or a mall with Neiman Marcus, Lululemon, and Cartier because down-to-earth human beings shop at these places. On the other side of this complex, you see this space under the High Line. While it still looks like a band-aid over a severed limb, this area feels much more safe and inviting to walk around. There's various colors in use, multiple construction materials, a historic vibe, sitting area, and greenery. This place does not make me feel like I have to show how thick my wallet is just to walk into the store. These so-called architects feel that modernity, which is basically simplicity for cost-cutting measures, is there to destroy a person's morality. You want to yeet an infant off the ledge of Abraj Abayi into the pit of Abraham. I mean, does this place not look like the castle from Resident Evil Village? Just to reinforce how out of touch these people are, look at this completed works page from Herzog und de Meron. I mean, I feel like there's an attempt at 90s internet nostalgia, except nobody wants that feeling. Look at all these tabs, man. <laughs> God. <laughs> Because benches and bushes couldn't be fit into their $100 million plus budget, it looks like a wall and feels dangerous to be around. Compare these two spaces. Which one feels safer and more comfortable to be around? And don't be condescending. This place feels lively. Small businesses with multiple facades, colors, etc. A lack of mundanity. Something interesting everywhere you look. Here's the exact opposite. A refusal and denial of exactly what it means to be human. Wh whatever that may mean. This looks like I'm having an epileptic seizure or I'm about to go into a black hole. I don't want to be near a black hole, It'd probably hurt a lot. Now aside from skyscrapers being bad for the environment in every way possible, looking ugly all around, and making the area louder and decreasing a person's perceived safety, how do skyscrapers destroy the social aspects of a city? If I haven't displayed this enough, skyscrapers are tall. Remember when I said over 150 meters or 164.042 American meters tall? So no boys under six feet. Yeah, that's true. Pretty smart guy whoever said that. Now, what do all tall things typically have? That's right. Shadows, and this has many effects. Here's a truly nostalgic clip from a documentary on what makes a good park. Sun is most important in nippy weather, when the rays make the difference between sitting comfortably or not sitting. At Greenacre Park, the upper terrace is warmed by infrared heaters. Less costly is protection from the wind. Where it's provided, you can have a sort of nice sun theater. What hurts most is not so much the absence of sun but of light. If we can't get the sun directly, perhaps we can borrow it. So people really do love the sun, and when a skyscraper comes and obstructs it, it can affect the housing prices and the well-being of the people that have to suffer. And these shadows are not just small, close shadows. Shadows cast from Billionaire's Row have been over two miles in length, depending on the season. And just like Billionaire's Row, one tall building will just spark the development of a new one so it can get sunlight, and then you have the financial district, where every street is dark all day, and only the top floors have natural sunlight. This is the main reason why New York City zoning laws require tall buildings to be recessed from the streets to allow light into these artificial valleys. You can see them work well here. This is literally where the idea for dystopian cities came from, where all the poor people live on the bottom and the rich on top. And if you're wondering why I'm only mentioning New York City in this video and maybe not LA, well that's because LA can't possibly be a city with over 20 Costco's in its metropolitan area and car parks on every roof. It's not a city, it's Henry Ford's wet dream. On top of casting shadows, large construction projects like that of billionaires' own financial districts around the world tend to draw in heaps of money to the surrounding area. You would think this would be good, some way to revitalize an area crushed by the exclusion of a tall building, when in fact, it's just rich people with better paying jobs pushing the poor out. The terms gentrification, eviction, eminent domain are all part of this idea that poor people are unsavable slum folk and just need to be moved out to make the city nicer. Of course, these architectural real estate firms have not done any shady business in order to squeeze the maximum amount of profits from their investments like non-unionized construction work from undocumented immigrants or hiding wages to pay less taxes. It's all clean American work here. I already mentioned this before, and if you don't think evicting people from where they live is bad, you're obviously unvaccinated. But even the idea of a residential skyscraper is bad. While many tall, low-income residential buildings aren't skyscrapers in the United States, they're quite well known in Asia. But this idea still applies to the chode-like residential high-rises here in America. Squishing as many people into a small possible area has many negative aspects. One of them being that as a tenant in a residential building, you typically pay rent, which also takes away from your ability to purchase a home. Why does this matter? All those new residential skyscrapers have flats that you can own. This makes that property cemented into the ground, literally. 
Because you pay money to a landlord, not only will rich people push up the rents for your greedy landlord, the landlord might even cave on a deal for a few million dollars on the property for a new development, and now you're out of the house because you have no say in where you live, because you don't own where you live. Like mentioned it before, that new skyscraper also made your living situation a lot darker and more undesirable, which might convince your landlord to sell faster. Just a reminder, your landlord isn't your friend, he is your employer, and he will evict you if he can make more money off of someone else. I mean, look at their reaction to the moratorium over the pandemic. Office and commercial skyscrapers can also destroy local areas. Here's a difference in population over the course of a day and a week for the borough of Manhattan. What does this tell us about how skyscrapers destroy local communities though? Comparing the workday to weekends, you see a massive difference in midtown and downtown. The people that work here are from the surrounding areas. Many people live in New Jersey or other boroughs, which is expected. People from outside the city come into it during the workday, but these people are not contributing to the community in any way over the weekend. These workers might only buy lunch here and not do anything else to help benefit the surrounding area like getting their hair done or buying groceries. They will do that back where they live. Especially with a pandemic, these numbers in midtown and downtown most likely look like the weekend numbers for the past year. These skyscrapers are just sitting around collecting dust while everyone was able to work at home. The skyscrapers are only there to make it cheaper and easier for the businesses to hold everyone. A place like Greenwich or West Village, you can see barely has any change in numbers because the people that live there work there and spend there. This is a good community and by chance have almost no skyscrapers in the area. To make sense of what I'm going to talk about later, I'm going to summarize the points made by Jan Gill in his presentations and TED Talks. Gill says two very important things that I want to state here. One being that the development of cities has changed after the 1960s from a people-oriented city to a car-oriented city. This is through designing streets and storefronts around a different speed. What does he mean by this? He means that when you're walking, spaces can be more intimate and contain more information. When you're in a car, you have a limited field of view and can't take in all the information you'd see when you are walking. This bolsters my argument about skyscrapers having unattractive bases. They are designed around cars so that they can see the building, because driving around at 25 miles per hour in Chinatown would be near impossible to understand what you were seeing. And the other point he made was that the development of cities were designed from a bird's eye perspective. It's all about if the top down is sexy and not about the design of the storefronts or street level development is good anymore. A good comparison of this is Pruitt's Igo, a government oopsie public housing project that demolished the neighborhood of minorities and put them into neglected, absolutely stunning buildings that don't exist today. Pruitt's Igo looked cool from above to some racist Missouri government officials, but it didn't turn out to be all that. Then we have the Potato Rose of Copenhagen. From above, this looks like trash, but at street level, it is the most desirable neighborhood in Copenhagen and feels safe. Now, I'm going to include buildings that aren't just 150 meters tall, but also buildings that are taller than 70 feet. Even Gill says that the best building height for people is around a five-story or 70-foot building. High-rise residential buildings do not create communities that are well-connected. It is hard to be close to the people that live on your floor when you only see them in a dimly lit, narrow hallway that smells like the person who burnt popcorn last. You only know the people on the floor above you because they make a lot of noise at night. Sex. I'm saying they're having sex. This style of living in crammed tall housing creates vertical suburban neighborhoods. Much like the only time you see your neighbors when you're pulling out of your driveway to go somewhere in suburbia, you only see your neighbors in the elevator, which is awkward, or in the hallway, also awkward. And much like suburbia, you try to make as few trips as possible because you live so many floors up. So you shop at the most convenient place to get everything you need, which like I said before is going to be some CVS or Walgreens. Skyscrapers also do not make great meeting places. Why do people go to large projects like these? They go for the view at the observation deck. Wow! Or the fancy shops at the bottom. But rarely do people go to a place because it is just a tall building. In fact, people typically do the opposite with a tall building. They want to get a view of the building so they go to a place that has that. The perfect example of this is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. There is almost no one around the base of this structure in comparison to the area far from it because people want to increase their self-worth by taking pictures of the same quirky photo that every other person has already made there. So people actually tend to be dissuaded from approaching a tall building. Places that are inviting and attract people are intersections, parks, plazas, and squares with that that entice people that have a manageable amount of seagulls to entertain kids. A perfect example of this is looking at places in Manhattan where there are a lot of people. Times Square, Union Square, Washington Square, and Grand Central Station. The squares predominantly became popular because they were intersections of busy streets, a perfect place for meeting people. And Grand Central Station is popular because it is a transit hub. Only did skyscrapers be built around these areas after their popularity. Wow. So let's summarize exactly everything I went over so you can get a clean takeaway as to why I hate skyscrapers and you should too. Skyscrapers are not very common and are all located in some metropolitan area. I mean, if your parents talk about how it used to be, then there isn't going to be a skyscraper where you live. So to clear that, I talk about any building over even 45 meters or 150 feet, as these buildings pose many problems to the city. One being that modern architecture is inefficient and consumes a lot of energy due to their glass exteriors. 
Modern skyscrapers are undeniably unappealing to the human eye, and that's if we are far away. People up close would have to pretty much look into the sun to be able to see the building alone. Skyscrapers also pose threats to the local community. People don't want to have to walk through a loud echo chamber of boring and perceivably unsafe buildings that look unappealing at their base to get to some local business because these tall buildings don't have any local businesses on the ground floor. It is going to be your Asian fusion bistro for white people with small dogs to go to. They also create large shadows which can obstruct natural sunlight into someone's living or working space. This will undeniably affect property value too. And finally, skyscrapers do not promote a healthy and fun community. There aren't kids playing at the bottom of a skyscraper. There isn't any place to meet people out front, nor places to meet people within the building. They're all built to compress as many people into a small profitable property. We should build our cities not to make it easier for people to go to work, but for work to be closer to where people live in environments that feel safe. Skyscrapers are bad. These buildings' facades are covered in windows and account for 14% of the world's total energy consumption just to keep it cool. I can't speak English. <laughs>